Hey everyone, this week we will be going over a way to scrape all of the D1 baseball stats, NCAA D1 baseball stats, through Tidyverse and Baseball R. So, if you have not watched any of my videos, though you probably should have watched at least one, you need to install Baseball R from GitHub. So you, how to do that is DevTools, double colon, install underscore GitHub, Bill Petty Baseball R. If you haven't done that already, make sure you do. Um, and feel free to run that again if you want a fresh install of Baseball R. Then we'll call it into our library. I'm calling it library Baseball R. And then make sure you have Tidyverse installed as well. So just remove this comment and run line 3. And then run line four for tidyverse. So we're going to load these in. Baseball R getting in. Tidyverse getting in. And then while that's happening, we're going to go to line six and we're going to say D1 schools. Master NCAA team lookup from the baseball R package. Piping operator to indicate we're continuing our code. Dplyr filter. We're going to say division equals one and year equals 2021. And I spelled division wrong. So there we go. So those are D1 schools with their division and their year. What we're going to do next is we are going to use the per package, which is under Tidyverse. And the reason why we're going to use this is maybe there's a chance that some teams have yet to play. Um, I know like a specific school like St. Joseph's is yet to play. Um, things along those lines. Teams that maybe wait a little bit longer to start their season. For So when you do pull these stats... Um, if you don't write some code to assign for errors, it will come up an error, your code will break. So we're going to create a custom function here and we're going to call it safe NCA scrape. And what safe NCA scrape does, we'll call from the per package safely and we'll just say NCAA scrape from the baseball R package. So what essentially that's doing is it's basically saying run that NCAA scrape function, but if there's an error, just ignore it and go to the next iteration in that case. So now what we're going to do next is create a custom function where we can acquire those stats for both hitting and pitching at the D1 level. With that safely function written, we're going to write a custom code to be able to pull those stats given hitting or pitching. So I'm going to call this NCAA scraper and you can call it whatever you'd like, but um, I'm just deciding on NCAA scraper. So we'll say function, school ID, school, and type. And then we'll add those uh, squiggly brackets to indicate, hey, what we want to write inside of the function. So this function will have three arguments, the school ID, school, and type. So first, we'll say if type equals batting, and we're going to do this. We're going to say message paste, and then we're in quotes, we're going to say getting batting stats for, and then school. That's one of the arguments. And then we're going to say safe NCAA, or actually we're going to say, we're going to cut, put it under stats. We're going to say safe NCAA scrape. And we're going to say team ID equals school ID because from the original NCAA scrape function, your arguments are team ID, year, and type. So we're going to say that school ID argument in, that func in the function we're writing now will match with the team ID. And we'll say year equals 2021 since we want the most recent stats. And then type equals batting then we're going to say else because we want to get the pitching stats so in this case since you're not running a multiple if statement you can literally just do if else because we're saying hey there's only two types batting or pitching so 
in this case we can say else message paste now instead of saying getting batting stats getting pitching stats for and then school and then we'll do the same thing except instead of using type equals batting say type equals pitching and then NCAA the stat site has a bit of like a kind of a blocker where if you run this too quickly um, it will knock you off the site temporarily and then you can't use it for a period of time so to combat that we will initiate a system sleep and what system sleep does it basically just puts your R code to sleep temporarily so it basically kicks itself off the server for a short period of time, however you want to designate, and then goes uh, goes back into it. So that way you can obtain the 302 school stats that you need. So the way we do that is sys sleep. We're going to say sample, and then sequence, and we're going to combine point. 005, 002, 001. You can use whatever you'd like. Um, I just prefer to do it that way. Um, you can use whatever numbers. Those are just three that I know will work in this case. And um, so we'll be able to run this. And then to make sure that we have our function return something, we'll say return stats since we are getting that stats. So We'll write this function in, and now we have that function in, and now we're going to run that function for both hitting and pitching. One thing that I will mention that I did not catch earlier was I shouldn't have put a combine element with the sequence here. It should just be sequence 0 0.005, comma, 0 0.02, comma, 0 0.001, parenthesis, comma, 1, double parenthesis. So make sure you have this. Um, I removed it, removed the C, the parenthesis, and then the corresponding parenthesis with it, and we will uh, get rolling here. So, now we're going to run code that says batting stats, and we're going to say 1, 2, number of row, D1 schools, piping operator, and again, we're going to go in the per package, and we're going to say map. And what map does, it's, it's a fast way of running like a for loop. And it's basically just going, iterating through those D1 schools, and, and in this case, pulling batting stats. So how we do this is function x, and then we'll put a space, and we'll say NCAA scraper, make sure you don't forget the R, and we'll say D1 schools dollar sign oh, I should probably uh, put that back in there d1 schools dollar sign school ID and then in square brackets X comma d1 schools dot or dollar sign school X and then type equals batting so that way we can map through those batting stats and then i'm going to copy and paste for pitching stats but instead of calling it batting stats i'll call it pitching stats and then say type equals pitching so this will take some time to run but um, I'm going to run some of this for you to see so you can kind of see what it looks like with that function written and how it's going. So you can see that it's saying getting batting stats for Cincinnati, East Carolina, Houston, Memphis, South Florida, Tulane, etc. So it's grouped by conferences. So it's going alphabetically by conference and then that's going alphabetically within the conference. So the first conference was the American Athletic Conference. Now we're at the ACC. 
and we're just iterating through and just saying getting those batting stats or getting those pitching stats so on and so forth so I'll come back in a second after both of these are done and then show you how to put those into a data set so you can see batting and pitching stats now that we have all the batting and pitching stats pulled what we're going to do now is we're going to put them into a data set so I am just going to change the name slightly just to make sure that when I do pull the stats um, that they are correct so we're going to say d1 batting stats batting stats piping operator and then again we're going to use the map function from per and we're going to say result and we're going to say bind rows we'll run that and then we'll say d1 pitching stats too so d1 pitching stats pitching stats piping operator map in quotes result piping operator find rows so now we will look into the batting and pitching stats so batting stats look at that stats for every team we have totals and opponents totals as well um, if you want to get team batting stats it's in here and then getting just every team available their stats their data um, really fun stuff so now I'm going to show you guys how to, in this case, get rid of those totals and opponents totals. So we're going to say D1 batting stats. And again, D1 batting stats. Dplyr filter. And then we're going to say string detect. Our string is player in our pattern. We're going to put in quotes totals. Equals false. So that means it removes totals the exact word. And then we're going to add another one saying the same thing. So we're going to say string detect. player opponent totals make sure it's in within quotes so basically what the stringer package which is under tidyverse does with the string detect is when you put that in quotes it means it's worth looking for that exact wording uh, in this case opponent totals let me double check to make sure it says opponent totals instead of um Opponents, yep, opponent totals. So run this. Go back into our data set. We can see that there's no longer totals or opponents totals for both hitting, and I'll just copy and paste this for pitching. pitching stats and now we got both and we're pulling both so boom boom and now to continue our awesomeness we're going to write a CSV file of this stuff so at least you have it in say an Excel format or things of that nature um, but uh, I'll show you next week how to do an advanced way of doing this. So I'm going to say read r write underscore CSV. So we're going to say D1 batting stats. And then we're going to call this um, D1 batting and today's date, March 8, CSV to indicate, hey, we have stats through today. And then same for pitching. D1 pitching stats. D1 pitching 0308.csv. I'm not going to run these, but 
you would run both of these and it would allow you to get the CSV files, i.e. Um, comma separated values in Excel um, if you want to view it that way. But tune in next week. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do this, but with writing it to a database where you can query it, query stats from a database and allows you to get all those batting and pitching stats. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.